Hi, it's Geometry Chapter 2-5. We're learning about reasoning in algebra and geometry, getting our first taste at writing direct proofs. So we have some properties of equality. So if you have the statement that A equals B, then you can add C to both sides of that equality to still maintain equality. Let's come up with an example. So if you have X minus 5 in place of the A, 13 represents the B. Well, if you have to solve for X, um, you're going to add 5 to both sides to solve. So let's see. I'm just copying the original equation. And see here, if you add 5, see those two terms will cancel out. But you have to add 5 to both sides to maintain equality. So there you go. X is 18. OK. Subtraction property. So if A equals B, then if you subtract the same thing from both sides of the equality, in this case C's, then it still works. So let's do this. So if you have x plus 4 is equal to 1, and you subtract 4 from each side, and since it's subtracted on both sides, representative of the c's here, then you're still maintaining your equality, and you're able to solve that x is equal to negative 3. OK. Multiplication property. If A equals B, you can multiply both sides by C. So let's go for it. So if you have Y is divided by 3 is equal to 11, if you multiply both sides by 3, then that will cancel out the 3's because that becomes a multiple of 1. So then you're going to get Y is equal to 33. Division property. If you have an equality, you can divide both sides by the same thing and maintain that equality, except for we must remember that you're never, ever allowed to divide by 0. So c can't be 0. So if we start out with 4x is equal to 28, if we divide both sides by 4, then you can find out that x is 7. OK. Reflexive property. I just want to just write duh, because, hey, A is equal to A. Boy, there's a surprise. Turns out in geometry class, you're going to be using the reflexive property a lot. All right. Symmetric property. It's just order. A, if A equals B, then B equals A. If X equals 5, 5 equals X. Whoa, tough. Let's keep going. If we have A equals B and B equals C, then we can make the jump to A is equal to C. So an example would be if you had Y equals Z and you were told that Z is equal to 7, then you can make the conclusion that Y's got to be equal to 7 as well. OK. Substitution property. A if A equals B, B can replace A in any expression. So if we start out with X plus Y is equal to 7, you solve for one of the variables. In this case, I solved for Y. So wherever there's a y, you can put 7 minus x. So here we got 3x plus 2 times, in parentheses, 7 minus x is equal to 20. And then you finish up the problem. See, all of that is inside here. Remember, you put parentheses around it because you're going to have to distribute the 2. OK. Distributed property. If you have a times this expression, that the summation that's inside the parentheses, you then can distribute the A. Or likewise, A times this difference, you can distribute the A and still have this difference. So I like to put little marks there in this example, like, like you're fishing and you're casting a line. It's going to become 3x plus 3 times 2 is 6. And then here we've got 3x minus 6. That's a distributed property. Okay. Properties of congruence. The reflexive property, when something is congruent to itself, we're using this a ton in geometry. So if I, you're given these two triangles and they share this side, you're going to find out in chapter, I don't remember off the top of my head, I think it's five, um, when we prove the triangles are congruent, you're going to say that side, 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 side congruence. You know that these two sides are congruent, those two sides are congruent, you have the shared side up the middle, then you know this, this, these two triangles are congruent. So the way we're getting, the main thing to remember is, is that 
reflexive property says this side that's shared is congruent to itself. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, another reflexive property, you can work with angles as well. You can say that this angle, angle E, is shared between this little triangle and this big triangle. So E is congruent to itself. Okay. Okay, symmetric property. Another order statement. If AB is congruent to CD, then CD is congruent to AB. These two are congruent to each other. Order doesn't matter what, how you represent that. Now, uh, same thing with angles. If angle E and angle F are congruent, 10F is congruent to angle E. There you go. There's your angles. Next page. Transitive property. If AB is congruent to CD, I'm going to highlight underneath it, and CD is congruent to EF, we can make the jump to then say that AB is congruent to EF. And the same thing works for angles as well. So if you say angle B is, you know, look, look, excuse me, A is congruent to angle B, B is congruent to angle C, we can just chop out the middleman there and go straight to angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay, now we're going to talk about proofs. Now, it's often more clear to write it out, but then this video would take forever. So I pre-wrote the video, and we're just going to move this box down and look at what's taking place. So if you want to figure out um, the value of x, this is a linear pair. So we can say that this plus this is equal to 180. Well, writing a geometry proof, a geometric proof, is we're going to start out by saying that this angle here, AOM, and MOC can add up, you know, that they're a linear pair. And then we should include some kind of statement here saying the measure of AOM plus the measure of MOC together add up to 180. So here you're starting out saying that they're a linear pair. Now we're going to use a definition, definition of supplementary angles to allow us to say that they sum to the numeric value of 180. How did I justify that? I justified that by looking back up to step number one. I know they're supplementary, so now I wrote it numerically. And then, and each of these lines are numbered, like one, two, three. Okay, now, what's happened here? I placed this value, 2x plus 30, in place of the measure of, of angle AOM, and the measure, the, the value of x, in place of the measure of angle MOC. So we're substituting that in there. Substituting that in there, from the information given, in, well, really, my little note here, I should just say it's from step two. Okay? Okay. Let's keep going. Now, we have, they wrote the distributive property. This is combining like terms. Let's keep going. Then, what took place between line 4 and line 5? Looks to me like we had a little subtraction of 30 taking place between the two steps. So then that's where this is coming from, subtraction property of equality. I'm putting a little mark here for 4 because you're getting your information from this step to then get to that step. Let's go down another one. Going from here to here, we are dividing by 3 to solve for x. So that's division property of equality, and you got your information previously from line five, and then we're done with this with this step with this step by step explanation. Let's go to the next one. Write a two column proof. Now, there's a knack to writing proofs. You got to look at what information is there, and what information where you need to go. Look, you're given A B is congruent to C D. And you're aiming for what's in red here. AC is congruent to BD. And what we need to notice is this segment right here is shared. BD, BC is shared between the two. So we're going to start out with what's given. Proofs always start out with what's given. And the last line of the proof is always what you're trying to prove because there's no point in writing further or something else. Once you get to what you're proving, you're done. All right, so let's go down the line. So 
if you start out by saying that these two segments are congruent, then you can say that they are equal in length because segments that are congruent have an equal length. Where and I'm getting I'm able to get this statement from this previous statement. So I put a little one right there to show it's coming from that line. And I don't recall if I said in line one that this was given. It was given in the very beginning. All right, let's keep going. B C is the shared segment. So you're saying that B C shared meaning it's shared between this red line shown here, AC, and BD, this length here, BD. So, okay, it's shared. Now it's setting us up for addition. If you say, let me slide the picture down. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, it's the whole thing is, oh, well, we're stuck. Okay. If you say that this length, AB, is equal to the length CD, which we already did here in line two, then the next thing is if you add the same amount to both sides, the BC, see, that's going to be your addition property of equality that we did a couple of pages ago. So, so what's changed between line 2 and line 4 is that BC was added to each side. And see, we used the reflexive property prior to that because we want to establish that BC is is equal in length to BC before you add it here and here, which is what's happening there. Okay, so that's done. Let's keep going. Then you have the segment addition. Pro oh, yeah, okay. So now I've got this is kept the same, and here these two were combined. These are segments CD and BC combined to form the, the length. Wait. Oh, no. I'm looking at the statement in itself. Excuse me. We're looking at just this part here. This part here is this. And you're just saying that AB plus BC is the whole length AC. And in that same section 5, sorry that jumped. Nope. There we go. Then, in that same section, we're going to say that CD plus BC, CD plus BC represents the whole length BD. That's setting us up to be able to see this, this final proof. You're getting to AC is congruent to BD. You now have the situation of now you've established that these two measures added together is AC, those two measures added together is BD, and now you can substitute AC in place of here and BD in place of here to then complete the proof. So we did that substitution property. You're using the information in line 5 and line 4. You're placing these values from 5 into 4 to be able to create line 6. So I wrote a little five, 4 comma 5 to show that. And then once you state that these two segments are equal in length, then they have to be equal in measure. I mean, excuse, excuse me, yeah, equal in measure, then they have to be congruent. Okay, let's try to finish this up quickly. So if you're given, in this example, we're dealing with angles. And it's going to be along the same logic as the previous problem. If you know that the measure of angle 1 is congruent to the measure of angle 3, and then you're talking about AEC and, and BED, then you're talking about you're having this common shared angle between here and here. So what we're doing is proof. Nice. Put the information that's given first. The two me two angles measure this, you know, have the same measurement. See, angle two is congruent to itself, reflexive property. Now you're taking the information in line one, and you're adding the measure of angle two to each side. So it's the addition property of equality. Then, now you're saying that this. Angle 1 and angle 2 together form the measure of angle AEC. And the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 is DEB, the measure of it. 
and now we can say that the, you're substituting AEC in place of this part here and measure DE, angle DEB in place of this. That's substitution. And then, oh, and that's all you had to prove. Okay. I believe we're done. Let's see. Yeah, we're done. So thank you for watching this video.